Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide. Jared Poland, Frono's photo. Dot com and in the next few months I will be moving because I bought a new place. Now because I will be moving and I still own this place, I want to rent it. And because of that, I needed to take some real estate style photos so that the listing agent can put it up and put it out into the world. Now at first I thought I could have somebody else do it, somebody that's an expert in doing interior photos for moving. And then what I thought was, well, why don't I just do it myself? Because I think I have a pretty good idea of what I'm looking for. And honestly, I will do a good enough job compared to just the $200 photographer that they were gonna send in to photograph my place. I rather do it myself. And to be honest with you, good enough in my book is 99% better than what most of the stuff is that other people are putting out into the world and you guys can do the exact same thing. So in this video, I wanna give you a bunch of different tips on what I learned from photographing my own interior photos, other than it took me about five and a half hours to get it right. And shooting was, oh, you know, 10 minutes of shooting and the rest was organizing, getting rid of clutter and going from there. Now I did reach out to my friend Mike Kelly to ask him for a tip and his best tip was declutter as much as possible. Now let's jump in to the iPad over here to look at this photo. This is I think the lead off photo on the listing. You don't see any clutter, do you? There is almost no clutter because it all went away. I have no clutter. Well, that's actually not true. The clutter was just hiding in the hallway behind me, as well as outside my front door. There's a ton of boxes and I still need to break them down and take them downstairs to the dumpster. But the point was, he said, declutter as much as possible. So when you look around this image, you don't, you don't see any clutter whatsoever. But there's a lot of other things that you can pick out of this. But before I get into the image, I'm gonna tell you how I shot it, what I shot with, uh, why did I go with doing it myself, opposed to, I was gonna hire a guy named Jeff Totaro, who's amazing in Philadelphia, and then I decided to do it on my own, which I thought was a great challenge. And it actually turned out to be better because last week when we were supposed to do the, fo uh, the photos, we were all locked down in Philly, so he wouldn't have been able to come over and do it. So I already got it done, which is great. So what did I shoot with? I used the Sony a7R 4 because it's 61 megapixels. Not that I need that because most people are gonna be looking at this stuff on the phone or on the internet, but I used the 20 millimeter 1.8 that they just came out with. And then when I got tired of switching lenses to go a little wider, I used the 14 to 24 2.8 from Sigma. Now, when you're doing real estate photos, you could shoot wide, you could shoot mediums, 35 millimeter, you could shoot up to you know 50 millimeter. It all depends on what looks right. The last thing you wanna do is have it look fake, meaning you have it look like the place is massive, and then when you actually go there to see it, it's small. You That's like when I put a picture of me on the internet and girls and I show up and on a date and they're like, I thought your arms were small bigger. I'm like, no, no, that's just the angle I used in the photo. So you can use a 24. You could use an 18 to 55. To me, it's about 24 to 50 millimeters, depending on where you're shooting. And that's also if you're shooting with a crop sensor camera, use the equivalent lens that's gonna give you that 24 to 50 millimeters, depending on what you're photographing. Now, in terms of settings, I decided to bracket my exposure. Now, if you've never done that before, a lot of the cameras like this have it built in where I could do nine different exposures, starting with uh, a half stop increment. It will go a couple over, a couple under, a couple over, a couple under. It will change the exposure for you. Now, if you don't have a camera that will let you bracket the exposure, it's real simple. Without moving the camera from a tripod, you take a picture at the proper exposure. Then you dial it down a half a stop, take a picture. Dial it down another half a stop, take a picture. Dial it up over the main exposure by a half and a half. That's bracketing. And what's happening is I then take it into Adobe Lightroom and do a merge file. I merge nine files. I took nine. Did I need nine? No, I didn't need nine. Now I merge the files together in Lightroom and what it does is it gives you a DNG file that's raw at the end and you have so much more data to work with. Now the reason you do that is do you see outside the window here, you can see that this is 
it's not blown out. It's exposed for inside, it's, it's also exposed for outside. So when you bracket the exposure and you let uh, Lightroom merge it, which it did a very good job by the way, it looks great. Now, I'm not a big fan when people take a perfectly exposed picture of outside the window and it's also in focus outside the window. That to me isn't realistic. I want it out of focus outside of the window if that's what it was going to be. So I still lock the focus. Well, I do the bracketed exposure. It gives me the over, the under, the perfect, and then Lightroom goes ahead and merges it. Now, somebody like Mike Kelly, who's shooting multi-million dollar homes or buildings, is going to take it into Photoshop and he's gonna do more work than I ever want to do. I wanted good enough. And I honestly think what I was able to get good enough was really damn good. And I think it's going to help when I go and list this place to help rent it. Okay, let's dive into the image now with some tips. First things first, you wanna make sure that the blinds are all even. Are they all even? No. Are they good enough? No. I failed on that one, but it, I got darn close. The last thing you wanna have is like one blind all the way up, one blind halfway down, another blind a quarter of the way up. So if you have blinds, try to keep them as straight as possible and even across the way. Now, the reason I didn't raise them all the way is because I still wanted you to have the exposure for outside. I just didn't want it to be wide open because I honestly never have them open, but it's also good to show to a, a, a prospective home renter or buyer that look, these shades are already here because these things are pretty expensive when you put them in. Now, a really good tip that Jeff Totaro did give me when he was here, um, he told me, have the lights on inside, look for a nice sunny day when it's outside so you can show the brightness of what's going on because it is, you want people to think that it's bright, it's nice, it's, it's warm and inviting when they're looking to purchase a place. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. I waited till 9, 10, 11 o'clock to photograph because that's when the light streaks were gonna come in. So I have the light from outside, I have all the lights on in the inside as you can see right here. I have the stop lights on in the background and I chose this angle. I wanted to show part of the kitchen on the left so you can see that. I chose, another tip is you wanna get all of your lines as straight as possible. Um, straighter the lines, the better. And that's why some people will go ahead and use tilt shift lenses. I didn't have a tilt shift lens. And honestly, I think everything looks pretty darn straight and pretty good, especially when I'm shooting at an angle. Now, what I love about this particular image, it shows the nice chair in the background. It shows the piano. By the way, I'm talking at the piano right now. That's why I'm right here. And I just think that this is a really good photo to lead off with for renting this place. I did the tripod at like eye level height. Think of who's coming into a place. Are they women that are maybe a little shorter? Are they men that are shorter? Are they women that are super tall? Doesn't matter. I, I thought something like five, six, five, eight, my height, my eye level kind of made sense. I didn't want to get super low. I just thought that a five foot five, five foot eight, somewhere around there made total sense. Actually, maybe even around five, five because I'm not that freaking tall, but with the hair, I'm like six, two. And with these shoes, with these shoes, they give me like an extra three inches. Um, because every inch counts. So I chose to put it at eye level that I thought most people would be at. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that the images that you're seeing on the screen right now were taken with the Sony a7R4 and edited using FroPak 2. If you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash FroPak2. Over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale for a limited amount of time. If you pick up FroPak 1 and FroPak 2 as the FroPak bundle, you can save even more. Moving on to the next image, I just tried to get this one as straight as possible at 24 millimeters and not shoot it at 20, just to give people uh, a feeling of what this room looks like. Um, pretty simple, not a lot of clutter. Let me give you some advice right here. When I zoom in on the background, you'll wanna make sure that your background is clean and you didn't leave anything there. Well, Jared, you left something there. You left something in the corner and you failed. Is it a deal breaker? No, most people will never notice it. I noticed that it was there. Now shooting into the kitchen, I made sure that the lights were on underneath the, the cabinets so that it was nice and bright and inviting. And also the difference between the daylight bulbs, because I've got daylight bulbs here, and those being a little more warm is, is to me a nice juxtaposition. You've got the nice daylight coming in, also with the warmth right there from those bulbs. Now, when we zoom in on the bananas, now let me tell you why I chose bananas that were 
still green, but starting to turn a little yellow because I think that somewhere subliminally, somebody may be looking at this. Actually, I didn't do this on purpose, but um, just go with it. That they might be saying, oh, you know what? This is a place that we can grow into and ripen. Some bullshit like that. Somebody probably wrote that down somewhere, but honestly, it just worked out well. I didn't want to have old bananas that were browning because I thought that would give somebody a bad impression. And in this case, we've got the new bananas. They're green, starting to turn yellow, and that means you can ripen here. You have room to grow. Um, Again, no clutter. Remember where I hid the clutter? It's all the way back here. Yep, a lot of clutter, by the way. It took a while to get rid of all that stuff. That's, that's the thing with, with photographing an interior is it took so much time to do so. Now, jumping back to the merging, I personally hate HDR. A lot of people know that I hate HDR, but when Lightroom merged my files together and I got them back, they didn't look HDR to me at all. They just looked like they were nice and exposed and real. That's the thing with photographing your interiors, real, as real as possible. You don't wanna mislead anybody. You want them to be impressed by what you did so that they come in to, to, to check out the place and not feel let down when they get here. So you wanna give a good impression, just like a dating profile photo. If it doesn't look like you in the photo and you end up going on a date and I show up and I'm like, yeah, no, uh, that's different from the photo. And they're like, oh, that was my photo when I was 20. And they're now like 33. And I'm like, mm, yeah, no, I'm leaving, bye. I've done that before. I've left, I haven't suffered through it. So this is just looking for different angles. This one was done with the 20 millimeter, just showing you all of the windows across the wall. Uh, I've got 11 windows across here. You see the fan up here? The fan is off. Uh, I I don't know who gave that tip and that Mike, uh, Jeff Tataro may have given that tip as well to turn off the fan. Now, if you're not sure what to photograph and what angles to look for, the easiest thing to do, go to Instagram and look at Better Home and Gardens. Look at anything on Instagram that shows you different interiors because those photos, I mean, just look at them. Will you just look at it? I mean, that's the thing. There's so much stuff. Go to Mike Kelly's website and then emulate what he's doing. Try to emulate what he's doing. He does sell a course. Maybe I'll link it down below. Um, at Jeff Totaro, go to his website, check out the great work that he does. I mean, that's the thing. You're not gonna probably do as good as they do. I may not have done as well as uh, Jeff would have done or Mike would have done, but I honestly think I did a pretty darn good job. So let's keep going back through these photos. Um, I had this, the, the traffic lights on and the traffic lights could run into issues when I was shooting multiple images, when I was doing the bracketing, because when you merge them together and it's taken like nine pictures and the lights change, check this out. This is what it looks like. Right here, look at, you see that? You see how the arrow's missing? That's probably because that arrow was out when that picture was taken. Is it a bad thing for me? No, I just, nobody else is gonna notice it, so I keep going. Oh, by the way, this is a Sony projector. This is not sponsored by Sony. I bought that damn projector. It's a great projector. Um, yeah, and behind me is a 166 inch projection screen. I love that screen. Okay, so this angle is straight on into the corner. It just gives you the feel of warmth. Uh, the fan is off, like I said, because you don't want the fan spinning and looking in and, and being a blur. So that was a great tip, a great piece of advice that I got right there. Shooting into the kitchen, just focused right here. What, what am I at, 20 millimeters? To me, the 20 millimeter lens looked like reality because I got to show the ceiling. You wanna see the original wood. You wanna see the original beams. You wanna see the brick walls. You wanna see as much as possible. And that's why I photographed it this way uh, with a 20 millimeter for most things because I thought it just worked out really well. Now that may not work in every situation, but for me, it was really good. Now here's something that's interesting. This one was done at 14 millimeters. It's actually right where the camera is set up right now is where I set up with the 14 to 24. And I know you don't generally wanna shoot ultra wide. You definitely don't wanna shoot fish eyes because they're not gonna look super good. But I didn't care so much about um, the bowing of the angles a little bit. I wanted to show the massive space that is the loft. Um, and what was interesting here is when I got behind the piano, the first thing I noticed was how much junk and clutter I had here in the hallway on the right hand side. And that's why I had to move stuff into the middle hallway behind me, out into the hallway outside of my front door so that it looked clean. This is a neon Pegasus that my friend did. Um, his name is James LeBold. This is my door. 
I, I'm gonna, I have a camera on the back of the door, that's right. I have a peephole that's a camera, art on the wall. We've got my coats. I wanted it to still look like somebody lived here and not totally fake. I mean, I'd love to keep it like this all the time, but that's just not practical, especially being that Kitty would scratch up the sides of my sofas if he didn't have his scratching posts all over the place. But speaking of art on the wall, you see how I have art on the wall there? This is interesting. I'll come back to some of these photos in just a minute, but let's go to my office real quick. I zoomed in here and I'm like, oh snap. I took an, a piece of art off the wall from here and then moved it out into the main area. And then when I re-photographed here, I forgot that I didn't have the art on the wall. Is it a big deal? No. Is anybody gonna notice it? No, I'm gonna notice it. So it's just, I'm passing that tip on to you. Make sure you have art on the wall if you have a hook there. Hmm. So these are my shelves, those are my bookshelves. Um, let's get back to this front entrance. So this is ultra wide to lead you in. You're telling a story. You wanna tell the story of, just like I say, tell you the wides, the tights, the mediums, and the details. I don't show much in the way of details for this, but you wanna tell the story. Invite people in. So when they come in through the entrance, this is what you're gonna see. And they're like, wow, mind explosion. So that's what I tried to do here. I wanted to get the wides, a little bit on the mediums, and somewhere in between with the 20 millimeters. So let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online photo portfolio, say you're an interior photographer and you need to figure out where to show your work, well use what I use, I use Squarespace. To get a 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. Let's keep going right here. Uh, I love, I honestly love the shot. I love the pops of color. I love the way that the, uh, the neon Pegasus is up there. Do I care that the background is blown out? No, I don't. In, in outside the windows, I really don't give a shit because all you're gonna see out these windows when you look, you're gonna see some power lines and then I-95, if anybody knows I-95, is over there. You can't hear it because we're all brick and we got good windows, but that's just out there. They'll notice that when they come here or look it up on Google Maps, they'll totally see that right there. Vertical entrance, not a lot of vertical pictures, but I wanted to get a couple of them. And this was funny because I had to rest the tripod, I used a crappier uh, Mi Photo tripod that wasn't getting perfectly level. So I had to put the tripod foot on my, literally on my foot, to level it and hold it there while I took a couple of pictures. This is the back area. Uh, so I took this with 20 millimeters uh, just to show the back area. We've got the spiral staircase. The bedroom is up there, up the stairs, not all the way up the spiral staircase. This is now looking in from the kitchen. The reason I left the kitchen on the left and the kitchen on the right, those foreground elements is to draw you into the room, but also to let you know that this is back there. Because if you looked at just the main wide shot like this, you know something's back there, but you don't know what is back there. Uh, now that I'm back to this image though, let me, let me just tell you how much I love this shot. I love that you can see the piano and the reflection and Kitty down here in the bottom left-hand corner or in the middle left-hand corner, but you can see the entire place. This is going to make an, an impression. So if somebody says that 14 millimeters is wrong, I don't care. I think it worked here. And that's one of the major messages of this video is if you think it works, if you think it looks good and it represents your place or whatever place you're photographing well, then that's all that matters. That's what you're trying to do is you're trying to sell the place for whoever's coming. You wanna entice people to come in and check it out and through your images you can do that. And I think that that was done really well with that ultra wide angle lens. Just the other way looking in, my bedroom, Purple wall, yes, I chose the color. It's called Mystic Grape by Benjamin Moore, and it's eggshell finish for anybody who cares about Benjamin Moore and paint. Yeah, my bedroom is pretty sparse. Uh, I had to borrow the bedspread, the bed cover from my neighbor because mine looks like it was from high school because it, it was from high school. Um, so he came over and he's like, yeah, you need to use this one. So he brought me one. So it wasn't my Dick Tracy bedspread. What are you gonna do? Um, Yes, there is a tub in, in the corner. Uh, the people before me, or the builders, put that in there. They went ahead and put in a soaking tub right in the bedroom, and there's a bathroom behind there. And that's basically it, guys. Um, a couple of other photos of, of the bathroom and then the freight elevator to take people up. Those are there as well. But the whole point of this is, is find different angles. 
if it looks good to you, then I think it works. And you can do this, especially right now, if you're cooped up inside and you're locked down on quarantine, you can clean up your space, test it out, do the bracketing photos, whether you have it built into the camera or not. If you have Lightroom, you can use it to merge. And like I said, I'm looking for good enough. Good enough is good enough in my book because my good enough is going to be better than most people's good enough. Uh, and, and that's all I really cared about. And, I, and I'm gonna applaud myself, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I was hesitant to do the photos myself, but thankfully I pushed myself to do it and got out of my comfort zone. And after I did it, I was really happy with the results that I got. And I think when we finally can, when the world is back to somewhat normal, uh, can get this place rented and those photos are definitely going to help. If you have done real estate and interior photos and you have some tips, please go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. We'd love to hear them. I'm by no way an expert at interior photos, but like I said, good enough is good enough for what, what you're looking to do. Uh, and, and that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya.